Hey everyone, Reclaimer here with 2XP Gaming. What you're taking a look at here is my Corsair H105 all-in-one liquid cooler, which is one of our most popular videos on YouTube right now. And basically, I installed this a couple months ago, and I was really hoping to get a lot of good thermal performance out of it, but haven't really been seeing that, and to be quite honest, I'm starting to wonder, I, you know, maybe I should start looking at air cooling again. Maybe I'm not doing something right with liquid cooling. So what I decided to do was get this bad boy. This is the Noctua NHD15. This is a premium, award-winning air cooler. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of nice stuff here on the box, but really what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to unbox this D14. We're going to show you how to install it, and then we're going to go ahead and compare what uh, the NHD4, uh, D15 does versus the H105. So let's go ahead and unbox this bad boy. All right, so first thing we want to look at with the unboxing here is this is very well packaged. Uh, the box has a lot of nice, you know, information on it, but we really want to see what's inside. Now bear with me because I'm just filming this by myself, so I'm hoping that the tripod is in a good position. First thing I want to note is that everything in here is packaged great. Um, if you take a look, everything has its own name and its own box. So this is a SecuFirm 2 mounting system, which again has won some awards. This is for AMD, which we're not going to need. An accessories box, which again is really cool. Everything is labeled. We got some NTH1 high grade thermal compound, which I hear is really good. I'm going to be using that instead of my Arctic Silver. Um, we have low noise adapters. Uh, these fans that are in here are very low noise. However, if you want to even go for a lower noise, you can add these adapters. We have a special screwdriver in here, a four pin a PWMY cable, and an installation kit for a second fan. Okay, now let's get rid of this. Let's just, hold on a minute. This is, it's packaged so well. Oh my gosh, all right. Let's see here. All right, so right here we have our second uh, NF A15 PWM fan. This is a 140 millimeter fan, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of here to show you uh, what we're looking at here. Unfortunately, Noctua still is packaging these with their desert storm colors, as I like to call them. Uh, they're not very attractive, but you know what? I really don't care at this point about the look. I care about what it sounds like, and I care about the thermal performance. So this is the second fan that comes with it. And this is the heat sink. Already one fan installed. This is a two-tower heat sink, and I believe there are six pipes on each tower. Again, Nachua has won multiple awards for their design. As you can see here, this thing is massive. You need to make sure that you have a case that is capable of fitting this. Uh, but take a look at just the quality of the design. It just looks really well made. Uh, and this is built off the D14, which has, again, won multiple awards. You're going to hear me say that multiple times because Noctua pretty much makes the best air cooler on the market. So what we're going to do next, now that we showed you in the unboxing, is we're going to go ahead and we are going to install this and show you how to install it. Keep in mind, I'm going to do a little pre-work here. I'm going to uninstall the H105. I'm going to remove the thermal compound from my CPU, and I'm going to get started with how to install. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do to install here is we're going to need to unbox the uh, SecuFirm 2 mounting system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. <clears throat> there are instructions in here, which are very nice. Thank you. We have two mounting brackets. We have the back plate and mounting hardware. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and install the back plate, okay? And this is really simple. We just need to go ahead and put this through. All right. It's simple as that. Now this is going to probably be a little loose until we actually secure the mounting hardware, which we're going to do next. Okay, so now that we have our back plate in the back, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take these two brackets here. Oop. <laughs> Sorry, I had the camera zoomed in. All right, we need to take these two brackets here, place them on the back plate. Now, depending on the way that you're going to orient the fans, um, could depend on how you want to have these. So for this way, we're going to be doing a, like a basically a pull push, basically going right through their setup. So we're going to be installing the brackets like this. Uh, there is a little, I don't know if you can see it here, there is a little peg here that's going to be sticking out, and you're going to be placing some plastic spacers um, between the bracket and these um, mounting brackets here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
So right now what I'm doing is I'm putting on the plastic spacers here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to tighten our mounting hardware on here. Now it is very, very important that when you're adding any back plate onto your motherboard that you do not over tighten the screws. It could damage your, uh, your motherboard. You basically want to make sure that they're firm. but not too tight. Going through once, making sure that they're tight but not too tight. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the mounting bracket installed. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the thermal paste on our CPU. Now I already went ahead and cleaned off the thermal paste that was on here before and I'm going to be using the Noctua N, uh, NTH1 uh, thermal paste. Now, thermal paste use sparingly you don't want to overdo it and typically uh, what we'll see is to put a small uh, uncooked grain of rice on the CPU so I'm going to do my best to do that right now okay um, that's that's about all you really need I don't even know if you can see it to be quite honest and I apologize if you can't um, but that's really all that you need okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get ready to install our uh, heatsink okay so one of the things that I've done already I'm going to make sure I'm zoomed out here yep I am is I removed the center fan as the instructions say you do. I don't know if you can get an idea from the video how large this thing is, but it is a beast. Um, but what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna be installing it uh, onto the CPU. And in order to do this, you're gonna need to remove the second fan and you can also use the fancy pants screwdriver that they give you. So we're gonna go ahead and do this now. We're gonna make sure that we're applying even pressure and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be seating this down onto the bracket that we've already installed. Okay. And it is on. All right. So we are applying firm, we applied firm, even pressure. So hopefully the, uh, you know, it can, it can uh, dissipate the thermal compound. Now, the other nice thing that I'm happy about personally is this heat tower does not interfere with my graphics card. There are some motherboards out there that you're gonna to have to move your primary graphics card into the secondary slot because of how large this is. Additionally, the DH15 has um, cut out parts of the tower to fit higher profile RAM, which this fit perfectly. Very happy about that. Now, the only other thing that we're gonna run into is when we install our second fan here, we're gonna to have to install a little higher because of the high profile, well, not the high profile RAM, it's actually just regular RAM, but also the 12 volt rail here, which is extremely close to the second fan. But let's go ahead and get the uh, tower installed. And I'm just gonna use the included screwdriver and I'm going, to ins I'm going to start. All right, so now that I've started the one, I'm going to continue with the other. And I'm gonna go through this until these are on tight. We're good to go. All right, so the tower is now installed. Now, our next step is going to be fastening the middle fan back in here and hooking it up. And additionally, we're gonna to need to hook up our second fan. Okay, so I went ahead and I installed the first tower fan here. And I wanna call something out. When you, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna try zooming in. That section right there, that is the CPU fan and the CPU OPT fan headers. They were blocked almost completely by the tower here. So what you need to make sure you're doing is plug in either the included Y cable, and keep in mind, the Y cable, not the included uh, low voltage adapter unless you want to use the low voltage adapter. Plug in the Y cable to one of your CPU fan headers so that way you have enough room because one of the fan headers is completely blocked by this first tower here. But once you have that installed, you can go ahead and just slide the fan and clip it into place and hook it up to the Y cable. Now, you can keep it just in this setup if you want. However, we're gonna be using a dual fan setup. So I'm gonna be installing my second fan over here and we're gonna show you how to do that. All right, so once you have the mounting brackets installed on your second fan, which they don't come pre-installed, I think that's a little weird, you're gonna go ahead 
and you're going to slide your fan onto the tower. Now, this is where you have to keep in mind that if you have a lot of RAM, <laughs> or if you have RAM that has a high profile to it, you're probably not going to get this fan all the way down. So let's see where my fan actually sits. Okay, so my fan actually sits above the heat sink tower here. So once I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and clip my fan on, which it's going to be a little difficult here because of the graphics card. All right, number one is clipped. And it looks like number two is clipped. Okay. Both fans are clipped on to the tower. The last thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to install the second PWM connector here to the Y adapter and we are now installed. Overall for the installation of this I'd say this was pretty easy. Um, it was a bit time consuming but I also did it by myself so that you know that that's something. Um, the mounting hardware was awesome. Nothing wrong at all with the mounting hardware. Very easy to use. Um, the fans here they look kind of ugly but I hear they have very good performance and the best thing about this is it looks like this is not going to interfere with my case at all. Now this is a huge case, this is a school, stu, uh, Cooler Master Stormtrooper, but it looks like it's not going to interfere with my case at all. The very last thing to do is to make sure everything is connected, and I'm going to go ahead and put my panel on here to show you what it looks like when it's inside. Alright everyone, and as you can see, this is the finished product. So again, we are looking at a full ATX size case, it's this Cooler Master Stormtrooper, and we have the Noctua NHD15 inside. It looks like I have roughly an inch to half of inch clearance between this fan and the plexiglass here. But it looks like it fits quite comfortably. This is kind of an eyesore, but again, it's not about the looks, it's about the performance. So let's go ahead and look into that now. So what we're looking at here is a comparison at idle speeds uh, for the fans at 50% and basically nothing going on with the computer. We're looking at how the NHD15 compares to the Hyper 212 Evo, which I had installed months ago, versus the H105, which is the all-in-one liquid cooling solution that I had, versus the NHD15. As you can see, the NHD15 takes the cake here uh, and has about two degrees better thermal performance versus the H105. Now we're taking a look at the average between the three coolers when we're running Prime 95 blend with eight workers. The fans for the CPU are running at 100% with each cooler. The Hyper 212 Plus Evo always consistently hit TJ Maxx or close to it, while the NHD15 ran at approximately 84 degrees average between all cores. It did beat the H105 by approximately 6 degrees, which I was very impressed with. Additionally, you could barely hear the fans uh, when they were running versus the H105, so great job for Noctua. Now we take a look at the average Prime95 large FFT test. Again, we're looking at eight workers running. The fans on the CPU are running at 100%. Uh, the Hyper 212 Plus Evo, again, ran at 100 degrees, close to TJ Maxx. The H105 performed at roughly 91 degrees on average, and the NHD15 came in at around 89 degrees. So not a huge difference between the H105 and the Noctua. However, Noctua, again, was better performing than the liquid-cooled solution, which really impressed me. And finally, we take a look at Prime 95 small FFT, which generates the most heat. Uh, if we compare the Hyper 212 Evo, it's again 100 degrees close to TJ Maxx. The H105 performed at 95 degrees on average, and the NHD15 performed at 90 degrees on average across all cores. Uh, what this tells me is this Noctua has performed consistently, even with slighter temperature differences, still has performed consistently better than the all-in-one liquid cooled solution H105 all while keeping the noise level at an acceptable uh, level. So I was extremely impressed by that. What I've learned from this experience is that Noctua makes a hell of a product. They definitely do a great job with packaging, 
giving you the tools you need to get the product installed, giving you great instructions, and making everything very simple. The hardware itself isn't the prettiest to look at, but as you can see from the numbers that you just saw, it performs extremely well compared to other air coolers and even some liquid coolers out there. Now, your mileage may vary with the thermal performance. I do feel that my chip runs hot. It is not overclocked, but I do feel my chip runs hot because other folks have gotten much better performance out of these coolers. But Prime 95 is a very uh, stress-inducing program. If you're running a game like Counter-Strike or Battlefield, your temps are not going to be getting close to 90 degrees and if they are, you really need to rethink your cooling solution. Overall, I think that the Noctua is a great thumbs up product. I'm extremely impressed with it and I'm very happy that I have that in my system versus the H105. Not to say that Corsair wasn't a good product. I think their customer service was great and the product itself was very good. It just wasn't giving me the performance that I expected from a liquid cooled solution. So I think that's really all I have to show. I hope that you liked the video and make sure you subscribe to keep uh, coming back for more videos from us. This is Reclaimer with 2XTB Gaming. Take care.